Hyperemia and congestion. Definition. Hyperemia is an increased volume of blood in affected tissue or part. It is of two types, active hyperemia and passive hyperemia. Hyperemia, active hyperemia. It's the increased blood in the end arterial side of the circulation. It's usually a physiologic response to increased functional demand, as in the heart and skeletal muscle during exercise. Neurogenic and hormone influences play a role in active hyperemia. For example, the blushing bride and the menopausal flush. The most striking active hyperemia occurs in association with inflammation. All active hyperemia is acute in nature. Chronic active hyperemia does not occur. Vasoactive materials released by inflammatory cells cause dilatation of blood vessels. In the skin, this contributes to classic rubor, tumor, and calor of inflammation. In pneumonia, for example, alveolar capillaries are engorged with erythrocytes as a hyperemic response to inflammation. Because inflammation can also damage endothelial cells and increase capillary permeability, inflammatory hyperemia is often accompanied by edema and local extravasation of erythrocytes. Reactive hyperemia occurs after temporary interruption of blood supply, ischemia. Hyperemic tissues are redder than normal because of engorgement with oxygenated blood. Congestion, passive hyperemia. It can occur systemically, as in cardiac failure, or locally as a consequence of an isolated venous obstruction. Congested tissues have an abnormal blue-red color, cyanosis, due to the accumulation of deoxygenated hemoglobin in the affected area. In long-standing chronic congestion, inadequate tissue perfusion and persistent hypoxia may lead to parenchymal cell death and secondary tissue fibrosis and the elevated intravascular pressures may cause edema or sometimes rupture capillaries, producing focal hemorrhages. Acute passive congestion is clinically a consequence of acute left or right ventricular failure, resulting in venous engorgement of the lungs, leading to accumulation of a transudate in the alveoli, which is called pulmonary edema. With acute failure of the right ventricle, the liver can become severely congested. Generalized increases in venous pressure, typically from chronic heart failure, lead to slower blood flow and a consequent increase in blood volume in many organs, including the liver, spleen, and kidneys. Congestive heart failure, secondary to coronary artery disease and hypertension, and right-sided failure due to pulmonary disease, are the most common causes of generalized venous congestion. Passive congestion may also be confined to a limb or an organ as a result of more localized obstructions of venous drainage. Examples include deep venous thrombosis of the leg veins with resulting edema of the lower extremity, secondary chronic passive congestion of the liver, and thrombosis of hepatic veins. Chronic venous congestion in lung. The most common mechanism for chronic venous congestion in the lung is left-sided heart failure. The left heart failure may be due to coronary heart disease or long-standing hypertension. Gross morphology. The lungs are heavy and are rusty brown colored in the cut section as a result of hemosiderin-laden macrophages. Due to fibrosis, the lungs are firm in consistency. The combination of brown color and firmness resulted in the name brown induration of the lung. Microscopy. The alveolar wall showed dilated and congested capillaries, and it's markedly thickened due to an increase in the fibrous connective tissue. The alveolar spaces contain numerous hemosiderin-laden macrophages, which are also referred to as heart failure cells. These heart failure cells can also be seen in the septa occasionally. Heart failure cells. These are basically hemosiderin-laden macrophages Siderophages. Due to passive congestion with dilated capillaries, the red blood cells leak into the alveolar spaces and are broken down, resulting in the release of hemoglobin. This hemoglobin is phagocytosed by the alveolar macrophages, where it's degraded to release hemosiderin and biliverdin.
The hemosiderin accumulates in the form of golden brown pigment as more and more red blood cells are lysed. Since these pigment laden macrophages are seen in the setting of heart failure, these are sometimes called heart failure cells. Chronic venous congestion in the liver. The hepatic veins empty into the vena cava, just inferior to the heart, so the liver is particularly vulnerable to acute or chronic passive congestion. The central veins of hepatic lobules become dilated. The increased venous pressure is transmitted to the sinusoids, which dilate, and central lobular hepatocytes undergo pressure atrophy. Gross morphology. The liver is larger and wet. The cut section shows congested red centers of hepatic lobules surrounded by pale-colored unaffected peripheral areas. This appearance is known as a nutmeg liver. Nutmeg liver. The term nutmeg refers to the appearance of the liver in chronic venous congestion, which resembles the appearance of speckled nutmeg kernel. Etiology. Most common cause is right heart failure. Other causes include obstruction of blood flow in the hepatic vein and inferior vena cava. Pathogenesis. Due to right heart failure, there is increased pressure in the hepatic veins. Hepatic veins are congested, and stasis of blood causes deoxygenation of hepatocytes. Central lobular hemorrhagic necrosis occurs, which is surrounded by a paler zone that contains damaged hepatocytes with fatty change. Adjacent to this zone, normal unaffected hepatocytes is present, which are adjacent to the hepatic arteriole and are better oxygenated. Gross morphology. Liver is enlarged and firm in consistency. Cut section shows alternating red areas, representing congested and dilated hepatic veins and paler areas of fatty change, giving the appearance of a nutmeg kernel. Here's an example of a nutmeg liver seen with chronic passive congestion of the liver. Note the dark red congested regions that represent the accumulation of red blood cells in central lobular regions. Microscopy. Dilated and congested hepatic venules with central lobular hemorrhagic necrosis of hepatocytes. Periphery shows the fatty change in hepatocytes. Hepatocytes adjacent to the portal triad are normal. Later, fibrosis may develop, and the condition is called cardiac cirrhosis. Chronic venous congestion in the spleen. Increased intravascular pressure in the liver from cardiac failure or an intrahepatic obstruction to blood flow, for example cirrhosis, generates higher pressure in the splenic vein and congestion of the spleen. The organ becomes enlarged and tense, and the cut section oozes dark blood. In long-standing cases of congestion, diffuse splenic fibrosis develops, as do iron-containing, fibrotic, and calcified foci of old hemorrhage, gamma gandhi bodies. They consist of fibrous tissue with hemosiderin and calcium deposits, and probably form due to scarring at small paravascular hemorrhages. gamma gandhi bodies are small yellow-brown, brown, or rust-colored foci found in the spleen in patients with splenomegaly, due to portal hypertension, as well as sickle cell disease. A congested spleen may weigh 250 to 750 grams, compared with a normal weight of 150 grams. The enlarged spleen sometimes displays excessive functional activity, causing hypersplenism, which causes hematologic abnormalities, for example, thrombocytopenia. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.